Remember four things. One, remember when Colin Powell stood in front of the UN and lied his ass off and said we have weapons of mass destruction. Remember the media. Dolly Plain Wilson's husband was screaming his head off. The UN inspectors themselves were screaming their heads off. He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. The media lets them off the hook. Remember when Bush, when 30 media outlets come out and say Bush won the election and won. Fox, his cousin, comes out and says it's not. The media lets them off the hook. Remember when they told you that Pat Tillman freaking died in the fire, freaking wiping out freaking 900 Al-Qaeda, freaking the very freaking guys who did 9-11 with a machine gun. The media let them off the hook. Remember when they told you Jessica Lynch decorating her medals, give her a Congressional Medal of Honor. She fought in valor, freaking went in there, and when she was hunkered down, the media let them off the fucking hook. Remember when the plumes were coming out, March 12th, the morning thereof, and the media lets them off the fucking hook. Do not believe these motherfuckers. This thing has been leaking radiation for four fucking days. And let's talk about the jet stream. Okay, a lot of people don't know this. In the context of the jet stream, the jet stream, people didn't even know what it was until World War II. It had been hypothesized, believe it or not, it comes full circle, by a Japanese philosopher many, many, many hundreds of years ago. He had hypothesized that there was this crazy airstream up there that went thousands of miles an hour. Well, during World War II, one of the Japanese scientists actually thought maybe he's right. So what they did, they released helium balloons with bombs on them up into the air, and he hypothesized they would get in the jet stream and come to the west coast of the United States. He had no idea if it was working. It was experimental, but they released thousands of them. Well, the fact is they were making it here. The United States had a serious problem on their hands that they kept it tight-lipped as they possibly get. Well, the jet stream at that time was flowing through Oregon. You know, it can go anywhere from all the way up the Canadian coast all the way down to Mexico, depending on where it just happens to be flowing at the time. We all know this. Well, these bombs were landing in the forest in Oregon. There was a Baptist church minister who had a Sunday school out in that. He took a group on a picnic from his church, children out in there, they found one, it went off and killed them all. It was kept hush, hush, hush. A lot of people don't know this. There was one found not very many years ago by a guy I know right over here on the other side of the Great Salt Lake. It's real. PBS has done a documentary on it. The protesters of Japan and got, went to the street, and it worked. To all you activists out there, to everybody who's been fighting the fight, finally, finally, we get a good story. Finally, one good story. And to all you ignorant masses out there, Fukushima is still happening right here, right now. There are four full core meltdowns going on right now. To you newcomers, whatever, what is a core meltdown? as nuclear power is nothing but contained madness. It is fission. It's fission that creates that madness. What happens when it escapes? Nuclear fallout, it murders in mass via the jet stream, via the ocean currents. They have said no. This is the Prime Minister. It's done. It's a done deal. They're protesting. If you think their protests were soft, oh no. Oh no. They were in millions. They were aggressive. And one other piece of major news we have. We finally have a whistleblower from the NRC who has broke ranks. He broke ranks. He's coming out and giving out information. I don't want to call out some of the places to get good information. 
since the times of India, those are journalists, they have been for years, they report true. They're the ones that broke, who funded 9-11. These guys are the ones who broke so many of these cover-up stories. There are plenty of bloggers, there are plenty of writers, there are plenty of activists out there. Jan, this milky clown, her agenda, you have to understand, people have an agenda, where is their agenda? As a nuclear advocate, you can only have one agenda, only one, only one. Life. Life. This is a classic philosophical battle between good and evil. It always has been a classic philosophical battle. For Members of Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda's cabinet have conditionally approved a new energy policy to cut reliance on nuclear power. But they stopped short of committing to a nuclear-free Japan by the 2030s. The cabinet on Wednesday debated the proposal compiled by energy-related officials last week. They agreed the government should consult host municipalities and the international community before phasing out nuclear power. But they did not officially endorse the 20-page document. Major players in Japan's business sector oppose eliminating nuclear power. Economic factors are also prompting concern from energy officials in the United States. The U.S. has a civilian nuclear pact with Japan. Prime Minister Noda says the government should come up with a strategy that shows stable direction but also remains flexible. We will walk, but they don't fall down. Some observers express doubt that Japan will achieve a nuclear phase-out by the 2030s. Cabinet members have indicated they want to remain open toward future changes in circumstances. Japanese politicians promised to rework the country's energy policy following last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda announced details of that policy uh, last week. He said his government would steer the country toward a nuclear-free future, but a final decision by his cabinet has turned a clear commitment into more of a vague idea. NHK World's Susumu Kojima explains. Members of Prime Minister Noda's cabinet are playing defense. Critics say... They backed away from a plan to win Japan off nuclear power in coming decades. But ministers stress their new energy policy hasn't changed. The new policy sets a clear direction while keeping a degree of flexibility to account for changing circumstances. The government remains faithful to the proposal worked out last week. That proposal said Japan would stop building new nuclear power plants and take other measures in order to phase out atomic energy by the 2030s. However, the cabinet wouldn't sign off on the idea. Instead, ministers say they will be taking the document into consideration as they call for continued efforts to reduce Japan's dependency on nuclear energy. Industry groups had been criticizing the nuclear phase-out plan as problematic. They have been pressuring the government to back away from the idea. Don't interrupt my act! Maintaining a stable energy supply will be difficult, and utility bills will shoot up. Companies may be forced out of Japan, and national strength will decline. When you pay off the first base for every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. The government's failure to adopt a decisive energy policy has angered people who have been calling for a nuclear-free society. They say they'll aim for zero nuclear dependency, but now we cannot help but suspect that's a token gesture. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda says the government needs to retain flexibility while aiming to phase out nuclear power. But Wednesday's decision only paints a more uncertain picture of the future of Japan's energy policy. Yes, now, on the St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellows on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellows' well, names? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name on first base. Who? The fellow playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? 
Prime Minister Noda has appointed Shunichi Tanaka as chairman of Japan's new nuclear regulation authority. The authority replaces the defunct nuclear safety agency, which dealt with the Fukushima Daiichi accident. The new authority was in many ways born out of the Fukushima incident. I would like to improve nuclear regulatory governance from now on. Tanaka was deputy head of the Atomic Energy Commission. Noda has also appointed the four other members of the authority, including a nuclear reactor expert and a seismologist. Japanese nuclear crisis minister Goshi Hosono says he believes the authority will do its best. It's another bullshit experiment. The safe regulation of nuclear power has been shattered to pieces, but I believe the authority will carry out its mission to rebuild trust and safety. <laughs> Hosono also stressed that transparency with the public is needed. Policymakers at the Bank of Japan are taking further action to try to give the economy a jolt. They've approved additional steps toward monetary easing. They'll be buying up more bonds and other assets. Board members reached the agreement during two days of talks. They decided unanimously to expand their asset buying program by about $127 billion to more than a trillion dollars. And board members decided to extend the term of purchase for government bonds and other assets by six months to December next year. They flagged a high degree of economic uncertainty abroad. They're concerned about European debt, a slowdown in the Chinese economy, and the bumpy U.S. recovery. BOJ board members downgraded their assessment of the Japanese economy. They say weaker domestic production and exports have put a pause on the pickup in activity. At a news conference that followed the meeting, Bank of Japan Governor Masaaki Shirakawa stated that immediate action was needed to keep the economy going. We judged today that further monetary easing was necessary now. That is to ensure the Japanese economy does not derail from a sustainable growth track with price stability.
leaving the link to a great article in the Huffington Post dated September 15, 2012. The title of the article is Flood Threat to Nuclear Plants Covered Up by Regulators. NRC whistleblower claims in a letter submitted Friday afternoon to internal investigators at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. A whistleblower engineer within the agency accused regulators of deliberately covering up information relating to the vulnerability of U.S. nuclear power facilities that sit downstream from large dams and reservoirs. The letter also accuses the agency of failing to act to correct these vulnerabilities despite being aware of the risks for years. You can read the full article by clicking the link in the description box below. We've reached the maximum allotment of high-quality digital content and up-to-the-minute information the human brain can adequately process.